Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the switch function in DAX. Now, the switch function is very much like the nested if, but a whole lot better. Here is how the syntax looks. The first part of the switch function is an expression. Now, an expression can be a number, it can be a text, it can be a calculation, it can be a boolean like a true and false, but make sure that the expression that you write as the first part of switch is a scalar value, which simply means single value. If that is a formula, that should evaluate to a single value, not a table. For now, let's just call this expression as my value, just for easy understanding. Then we move to the other parts of the switch function. Now, if you take a look here, we have combinations of value and result, and you can write them as many as you would like. What the switch function is going to do is, after you declare the expression, which we are right now calling it as my value, it is going to compare my value against the value that you have written here. The my value matches this value, which is what you've written. This is going to give you the result that you have mentioned against that. If it doesn't match, then it moves to the next row and it compares with this one. If the expression that you have written here on the top, which is nothing but my value, matches with value two, then it gives you result number two. And you can write more combinations of that, like I just said. Finally, you can also write a final else. That means if nothing else matches, you can just put a comma here in the end and you can write the else part. This is going to be evaluated if none of the values matches. Now, a couple of things. First is the value that you write can again be a number, it can be an expression, either of the two. You can write a formula or you can write a direct value here. It can even be a text. The more important thing is the switch function actually moves in the order of the sequence. That means it's going to check the first one here, then it's going to check the second one here, and then the third one, and then the fourth one. The time it finds that any particular value has matched, it will stop evaluating and then close the switch function. Now let's just take a look at uh, Power BI and let's see how the switch function works. All right, I'm in Power BI and I have a very simple date table here. I have dates right from 1st Jan 2019 up till 31st December 2020. And I'd like to find a quarter for every single date. That means dates from January to March group test quarter one, from uh, April to June group test quarter two, so on and so forth. So what I have done is I have written a very simple switch function here. Like I said, the first part in the switch function is an expression. So I write a Boolean here, which is true. Then I write that. Why don't you find out the month number of the calendar date? That means it's going to find the month number of every single date. Let's just say that it found the month number to be as one. It is now going to compare the month number is less than equal to three or not. And you can see January, which is the month number one is definitely less than equal to three. That gives me a true. This true is going to match with this true. And because the match has happened, it's going to give you Q1 as an answer. It will stop evaluating after that. Now, let's say, for example, you're evaluating for the month of April. So it comes here and checks. In switch, the first part is true. So it's going to look for the Boolean true. It is going to come here and see that if the month of April, which is number four, is less than equal to three, that gives you a false. So it's going to move to the next one. The month number is less than equal to six. That gives you a true, which gives you the value Q2, so on and so forth. And if none of the three matches, three, six, or nine, it finally gives you a Q4. And this gives me the right answer. So if I just go here and maybe take a look at uh, Q4 here, the only months that I will find here is October, November and December. So you can see that. Let's just take a look at another example of the switch function. Again, I have a very simple table here, which is where I have serial numbers and a random value here. I'd like to group the values in mid, high or low categories. Let's just take a look at the switch function that I have made here. Again, I'm declaring the first part of the switch function, which is an expression as true. And I'm going to come here. I'm going to say that that check the value, which is this value. If that value is less than equal to 120, write me a low. If that value is less than equal to 150, then write a mid. If none of the two match, that means it has to be a high. I finally write a high and I close the bracket. And it groups all the values into three bins, low, mid and high. All right, that was all about the switch function. If you have any questions about this, I'll be more than happy to help you out. Just drop me a comment. Thank you so much for watching this and you take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.